Are you ready to move your telecommunications workload to a cloud native deployment? If so, or if you're just wondering what that would look like, then I have some key aspects that you should consider as you look to do your network deployment and planning. Hi, I'm Justin Hart, CTO of Room Communications Cloud and Edge Business Unit. And it's my privilege today to share with you some of the lessons we have learned as we've moved many workloads to a cloud and virtualized environment and to help ensure your success as you do the same. Rubin has been serving the telecommunications industry for more than 20 years, building session border controllers, or more commonly known as SPCs, to provide high performance and guarantee real-time communications. We've seen the industry go through many significant changes when it comes to the infrastructure used to deploy the applications and services within the network. Where SPCs were once deployed on bespoke purpose-built appliance hardware, many customers are now moving and have already moved to virtualized software-based solutions deployed either on a virtualization environment or containerized environment. The next natural step for many is to move fully into a cloud native deployment, embracing containers and Kubernetes. With that introduction, let me state in those in simple terms that when it comes to virtual and cloud environment, real-time communication and applications are often more demanding and different to generic applications run within a cloud environment. We have observed several key insights and I'd like to share with you free today to talk about in more detail. Carrier grade and high availability, highly efficient load balancing, and finally, ensuring media quality. Key point one, carrier grade reliability and high availability. When telcos consider cloud native deployments and operation of real-time communication workloads, they must still consider and have carrier grade reliability and high availability. This is simple table stakes by legacy design, regulatory requirements point of view, and more importantly, from a customer perspective. We believe two key mechanisms are important to achieve this active active redundancy and NDK redundancy. In an active active model, when the SPC worker fails, two things happen. First of all, the sessions that were hosted on the failed worker are distributed across the remaining active worker instances. Next, the media IP addresses are reallocated and assigned to the sessions on the newly established workers so they can continue processing media for those calls. When it, this, with this failover over process, the associated media streams and session dialogue states are not impacted as they are reconstructed on the new workers. This model is particularly attractive in public cloud deployments where delay of migrating a public IP address can sometimes call instances to have media outages beyond the tolerable limits for humans listening to telephone communications. In an NTK model, this is based on the concept of having a sliding scale of how much resilience you want. As best practice, NDK gives the network operator the ability to determine how much extra capacity to overallocate to deal with one or more failures within the network. Key point two, highly efficient load balancing. For real-time communication workloads, a load balancing function is needed to support horizontal scaling across worker elements. A challenge for session-based communication protocols such as SIP is that related events ideally need to be processed on the same worker instance that they've begun on in order to perform optimally within the network. A generic IP level load balancer is insufficient for this task because typically it's not SIP aware and will not be able to associate related events. From our experience, the right solution is an active standby load balancer that is SIP aware. This is used as a signaling front end and it becomes the entry and exit point for all SIP signaling in and out of the cluster. Sessions are distributed across the SPC worker instances based on their current workloads. Work related to the existing session, for example, where dialogue messages are sent to the same worker where the session processing began. If a worker hosting the active dialogue dies, the load balancer will move the mid-dialogue messages and other related work for to another worker to continue processing the event. This is done by retrieving the current state in session from a shared database and reconstructing on the new worker. Key point three, ensuring media quality of service. For real-time communications applications, it is particularly important that the applications are able to rely on a deterministic performance profile from that environment in which they're operating in, whether that's a virtualized or cloud-native deployment model when we first started deploying our SPCs on OpenStack with our customers, we quickly realized we needed to pre-tune or determine certain parameters within the environment to ensure and guarantee performance for the SPC application. For example, by ensuring that processes are not subject to the detrimental effects of noisy neighbors, frequent memory cache misses, or latency introduced by accessing non-local memory, we were able to achieve a deterministic behavior. Another example is the importance of updating and ensuring the enablement of CPU pinning. This significantly improves performance processing on the platform, even if it does sometimes provide some trade-off with other applications that may be using the same environment and underlying infrastructure. 
In summary, I hope this short video helps you to understand a few of the key aspects of deploying session border controllers in a virtualized and cloud environment. As you plan your next steps towards migration of real-time communication workloads to a cloud native environment, please know that Riven is ready to help and assist you in the future of your efforts. Thank you.